Next, let's look at how the components of an embedded system fit together. Right? We're going to have the computer, and we're going to connect through the input-output ports. Some will be just output, some will be both input and output, and some will be just input. And we're going to connect these up to devices, this which we've already listed as electrical, mechanical, chemical, biological, optical, your list can go on and on. Okay, now let's look at inside the computer. In the computer, we said it has a processor. The processor is the brains, the thing that performs actions, and we're going to connect up to this processor two types of memory. We have random access memory which is volatile and it will contain our data. Volatile means if we shut the power off it goes away and then we have another type of memory called read-only memory and sometimes we're going to call it flash because that's the technology that was used to build it. And it is non-volatile. That means the data does not go away. And this non-volatility is important in an embedded system. And what we're going to put in the ROM memory is our code or our software will go in there. And as you, as I mentioned before, an important part of an embedded system is input-output. Okay. And we're going to connect all these together with a bus. So these are the components of our embedded system. The picture that we drew on the previous slide was classified as a von Neumann computer. And that is the memory, the two types of memory, and the I.O. all existed on the same bus. So we had the processor, which is the intelligence that performs actions, and we had our RAM memory, which contained the data and we had our ROM memory which contains our instructions and our I.O. which performs either output or input to the world. That was a von Neumann machine and we can see that all the information is connected across the same bus. The Cortex-M, the one we're going to do in this class, is classified as a Harvard architecture. And it is different in the following fundamental way. And that is, we still have a processor which executes instructions. And we still have ROM which contains those instructions. And the processor and the ROM are connected by a bus which allows you to decode the opcode bus, the iCode bus, allows the processor to fetch opcodes, but this processor has a second bus. And on this second bus, which is called the system bus, we see our RAM, which contains our data, and our I.O. devices which perform either output or input to the real world. And having a second bus allows you to do two things at once. At the same time, the processor can be fetching an opcode. At the exact same time, the processor is writing 
data to RAM. In this way, the computer will run much faster. In fact, the processor that we're going to use, the Texas Instruments TM4C123, which is a Cortex M4 processor, actually has five or six buses, allowing up to five or six operations to occur simultaneously. 